One of the first professional speaking international missions that I ever went on was in the deep south of the United States of America, in Alabama, where the people are wonderfully hospitable and friendly, but they also speak real slow. So slow, in fact, that you know what they're gonna say when they're only halfway through that sentence. But one of the great things about this particular mission was that the people of Alabama are particularly friendly and hospitable, and also I got to meet a sample of the audience that I was going to talk with before the first big gig at a university auditorium where there were hundreds. And it was really good, as it always is, to be able to connect with a few people in your audience before you talk so that you get the chance to find out what they really want to know. And what was particularly interesting about this interaction with the young people, the young students, was they wanted to know things about Australia that were obvious to Australians, but not to people in uh, the Deep South, where they don't travel around the world very much. A lot of them don't even have passports. And the real question that stuck in my mind was, do we have kangaroos hopping over the Sydney Harbour Bridge? Now, if you're from Sydney, which is my hometown, of course, you know that they don't. But I was able to tell them this, and uh, it reminded me of uh, when I was at school, and I had a friend who actually told stories when he went to America and lived in Boston, where he said that his mother had a kangaroo and took the kangaroo around the supermarket, and they took things off the shelf and put them in the kangaroo's pouch. It wasn't true, but he said they believed him. But everything I told them was absolutely true. Now, just stop for a moment and think. At the moment, I've been painting pictures in your minds about kangaroos hopping across the Sydney Harbour Bridge and in the supermarket, but I haven't, if you look closely, used a single slide to talk with you. No slides out here. And that's the point I really want to make, is that when you're doing presentations, you can connect with people and tell them stories without using slides. So many people these days think, I can only do a presentation if I've got lots of slides to show people. And that is wrong. So when I'm helping people with their presentations, I've got a new rule. And number one is I try to talk them into doing it right without slides first. If you can get up and connect with the audience and get your eye contact right and your body language right, your structure right, your content right, then you can wow any audience. You don't need a slide. And then what I say is move on to part two when you've mastered that and you can deal with the complexity of slides. Now, you can have great slides, and I can help people make great slides and know how to use them in front of a big audience. But you don't have to, and it's more complicated, so the best thing is to save it till a little bit later on, once you've mastered the initial skills. So, when you ring up and want to talk about doing presentation coaching for yourself or for your company, then think about that. Think about, am I prepared to have a go without slides first? Because if you do, you'll be so much better. It also allows us time to deal with that other important matter, which is giving great answers to tough questions that come up during and after your presentations. And you don't need slides for that. So, if you do ever see a kangaroo hopping across the Sydney Harbour Bridge, or a kangaroo in an Australian supermarket, then by all means, get out your camera, take a picture immediately. One day, it might make a great slide to show people. But you can do great slides by painting pictures in people's minds without a slide in sight. And I can help you do that.